Hey everyone, welcome to WordPress tutorial 4. Um, this is an advanced tutorial and if you're not comfortable or don't really want to know about um, setting up your own local web server, then you can skip this tutorial. Um, I'm going to just explain what I mean by setting up our local web server. A local web server is something, local being the key word, um, a local web server is a server that's running on your computer. So if you're, mm, I guess, got a PC, then we'll be setting up a web server on your um, personal computer or your laptop. Um, if you're doing this tutorial on your phone or a tablet, then um, this tutorial, um, you will not be able to install a web server, not easily on that device. So I'm assuming you've got a PC. And I'm also assuming it's a Windows PC, uh, not a Chromebook. Um, the reason why you would want to set up a local web server is that you're doing a lot of web development. So I, I um, create websites and play around with a few web apps. So this allows me to, if I set up a web server, then it allows me to play around with um, different web applications. For example, WordPress is a web application, but there might be some others that you can download off the internet for free and you can install locally and kind of see what that looks like. Now, a web server is, um, so if you go, let's go to Chrome. If I go to, uh, let's go to Edge, actually. So this here is Microsoft Edge. And when you log uh, or load up your web browser, um, most web browsers take you to a front page. So Chrome takes you to Google, and this takes you to Bing, or some kind of Bing. Um, page and that's off the internet it's actually reading off that off the internet so you're online if you like and you're on the internet and you click over here you'll go to a URL um, simply when you install a web server locally then you um, are offline you're able to view files offline things that are saved on your computer so I'm going to just draw you um, a little diagram I've got a diagram here and I'll just find something. So when you, we did tutorial one, we talked about the fact that to have a website, we needed to have a domain name, web hosting, and then the application. And when this web host here lives in the cloud or the internet, someone else's server, um, there's actually these web hosts run on big computers and big rooms all around the world. Um, However, if we want to have a local web server, what we're really saying is, forget about the domain name, no one else is going to be visiting it. So we don't need, oh, just get rid of that guy, maybe change it to a pointer. Um, we wouldn't have necessarily our own domain name because no one else is going to be accessing it. It's just local to our PC. No one on the internet can access it. It's an important point. We wouldn't really have this, really. Uh, what we would really have is our domain name, or we wouldn't need a domain name because it's only running locally. We have something called local host. It's called um, really local host just means um, that we're not going to the internet. So there's no www, no internet. We usually go to local host or some, some equivalent. And local host, putting that into our uh, web browser up here means we're not going to the internet, we're just looking for something local. I'll explain what that means really in more detail. The web server, instead of going out there and you know renting one off the internet, um, what we're going to do is actually set up our own local web server. And that's what this tutorial is about. So it's local to our PC. So it won't be crazy and it won't be GoDaddy or anyone else. It'll actually be local on our Windows PC. I'll just make that explicit there. This is, of course, offline. Um, you're not renting it. You just actually get it out of the box. It's the domain. It's not even really, a, it isn't really a domain. It's actually just the URL that we're going to be using. It points to our local web server. And then this step is actually the same as what we would do if we were online or offline. We can install CMSs like WordPress and all the other web files locally. So what we're really containing is we're containing all of this stuff here, putting all this stuff, instead of going onto the internet and getting it, we're really just having this stuff local. I mean by local. So local being not connected to the internet. Offline is another way of saying local. Offline to our PC. Look. 
It's his own little web server, and we can play. It's like a playpen. Um, the other advantage of developing locally is that once you could play with and make a website um, offline um, and have like a test site, and you could be making all of it and spending, you know. Uh, a couple of weeks or something making it locally and then once you're happy you can move all those files to the internet so if we are there any clouds here let's do this guy this this guy is the internet which is our web host or our internet web host let's just say internet there this will allow you to have it local as opposed to on the internet and then once you've finished developing um, happy with all your files um, then you could then upload all that stuff to the internet so that that's one of the really the good uses of having a local host is that you can make everything offline on your pc you can um, work offline with no wi-fi or whatnot make all the bits and pieces uh, wordpress sites just like you've done on tutorial one two and three um, with that i've gone through um, it's all local and then when you're happy you just um, move all of that stuff here to the internet and you don't and this this can continue running locally or you can blow it away so that's one of the advantages of having a local web host the other thing is instead of just having the other other way like i said earlier that you the reason you might have a web host is simply the fact that you just want to install like i want to try out this app here you know app one i want to try and see what that you know wordpress uh, next version of wordpress or joomla or um there's um open cart you might just go boom, 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 like I do, and it's not actually so. I'm, um, um, I'm not using it necessarily all the time to just make a website, a website offline, and then move it to the internet. What I'm actually doing is just trying out a whole lot of different apps, different types of uh, what is the latest CMS that's on the market, and instead of going through the hassle of paying for web hosting and a domain name, I control those things out on my computer and then go, yeah, 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 I really like that new app and now I'm going to use that to create a website. So the two reasons you'd do it. Both of them, the second option about creating, installing all the apps is really just for um, for someone who's passionate about web apps and the internet and learning about more stuff. It's not, um, that's not going to uh, apply to someone who just wants one website or a couple of websites um but um having a uh, and um, developing local um and then pushing to the internet like i said before to the cloud is something that happens quite commonplace um especially with a web developer so it's worth knowing even if you're never going to do this it's probably worth still understanding how this all hangs together um the other thing that this tutorial is going to cover or which we're going to cover is um this web host that we set up locally on our pc is still it contains the fundamental elements of any web host be that local or on the internet so it helps you understand um, what this uh, piece of the puzzle is um, even if um, you're, you're using um, an internet web host like you would be when you host your website um, through tutorial one two and three so what we're going to do first is i'm going to explain what this guy is what is a web host? What actually is under the covers of a web host? Be that the one on the internet or your local web host. And this tutorial is about local web hosts. So I'm going to talk about how we can, what one of these things are and how to set it up. And I've got a diagram to explain that. I'm going to, this is, a, I'm going to walk through this diagram just quickly. Um, and then I'm going to go into detail. So the first thing to realize is that when you go out um, and set up a web host, either on your computer or on the internet, there's usually two most common ways or two most common web host options. So when you buy one, you'll get the question, it will say, will you, would you like to buy a Linux web host or a Windows web host? And when you're using open source software like WordPress, which is written in a language called PHP, um, the, the open source software is usually, um, it is changing, Microsoft is, for example, um, who owns Windows, obviously, um, putting out more and more free software. But back in the day, and, and actually continuing to today, open source software has been associated with Linux. 
And I'll explain what Linux is. If you had your, say, computer at home, your laptop, you wouldn't really um, see many people that have a Linux computer. Linux is an open source operating system. It doesn't look like Windows, but Windows is, you could say that Windows and DOS and all the rest of it were a kind of a next level um, proprietary version of uh, an operating system. That's exactly what they are. And um, both Windows and Linux have a historical relationship. Um, but it's safe to say that Linux is not commonplace when you buy a computer. If you didn't install Windows, if you bought a laptop and it didn't have any operating system on it, which is very unusual, then there are a lot of uh, Linux-based operating systems you can get um, to install on your computer. But really, not many people have that. And the reason why they don't have Linux on their computer or their laptop is that it's firstly unfamiliar. Everyone's grown up with Windows. Um, and secondly, it's not as... Uh, historically and it is getting better because i'm going to get a whole lot of linux lovers um like if i post this on the internet they're gonna they're gonna have a go at me but fu fundamentally windows is had a lot of people um sitting down together in microsoft and around the world um building it and so therefore it's quite nice right we've got this you know all this stuff going on and all this a lot of money spent on it linux um and and unix which is which which is let's just say it's one and the same for its argument's sake it's not which our linux is open uh, built on top um this operating system does not necessarily look like windows i think you can get um versions of it that look like this because um linux is not owned by anyone per se like windows is owned by microsoft so it's open source and therefore um, there are lots of different types of versions of Linux. Um, there's something called Red Hat Linux. Um, Unix I talked about before, which is, it's a story on itself, but there's there's lots of different versions of Linux, which is an open source um, OS, and they, they, they're all quite different. And um, without going into that in any more detail, I just want to really say that there are two types of web host Linux, which is free web hosting or there's windows web hosting and the only difference between the two as far as your website is concerned are the bits that make it up they are they are made um, web hosts are made up of of three fundamental things um, again uh, someone else might explain that in more than just three ways um, but they're comparable there's either the free version this is a good way of saying it the free web host version which is built on open source software or the Windows web host and you usually pay more for this. And this is the Microsoft uh, web service stack. Now I've just con probably confused you and um, got into a lot of detail there. Now, un but, but what I will say is that unlike a laptop, when you go out and you buy a laptop and you generally always have Windows on it and if it had Linux or some variant of Linux on it, you'd probably have a heart attack if you've never seen it before or weren't that technical. Um, and, th and that and that's uh, and that kind of instance when you buy a laptop, um, that would make sense. But when you have a, when you go out and get a web host plan, Linux is actually in some ways more popular than Windows. So even though if you bought a laptop, you'd always buy Windows. When you go and get a web host because a web host is quite technical, we don't need all the nice user interface and all the money that's been spent on it. Web hosts are very, very simple things, and therefore, we don't necessarily always need the Windows version. And as time's passed, what server or well, operating system that the web host is running, um, you, uh, what server you use is becoming less and less kind of relevant as, as Microsoft and the open source community are kind of working more uh, and, and kind of not in hand in hand, but in a similar way so that uh, Microsoft is not really interested in selling you hardware. They're just interested in really selling you applications these days. So what server you have is not the be all and end all. However, 
However, what I'm trying to, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that the free version, um, which is the Linux, uh, the Linux um, web server stack, is very popular and most websites run kind of on this. So don't get, don't necessarily get put off by just the fact that your laptop doesn't run Linux. It's, that's fine. Um, when you're dealing with web servers, um, when you go out and buy your web server, you generally um, buy a Linux um, web, web server. And um, the Windows one you'd only ever buy if you were um, what's called a .NET developer and you're specifically involved in .NET. And the reason why you buy a Windows one is that it's all set up really for that kind of programming language. That means nothing to you, that's fine. So at this point in time, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to avoid these guys and I'm going to move these guys away. I just, the only, uh, I guess, final point in saying is that both web uh, hosting, Linux or Windows web hosting, are made up of three elements. And that are, they are a database. In the case of the Microsoft one, there's MS SQL, Microsoft uh, SQL, database, database, that's where all your data lives. You've heard the word database before. And um, the kind of free world uh, Linux stack, um, you used MySQL, which is then for my SQL and it's the free version of this and it's very good and just as stable it's just not written by Microsoft the middle layer is the actual web server the one that um, talks to the database and and promote provides a way in which your website and your files to talk to the inter, uh, the internet or your web browser is called the web server um, the Windows world uses something called IIS, which is called, I think it's called, um, I think it's Internet Internet Server, or I can't actually remember what IIS remember, uh, stands for, but it's effectively an Internet Server, um, and I'm going to get shot for not uh, remembering what their name is. Uh, Apache is the most common web server that, that's, that comes with a Linux um, development stack. Um, and after you've got the web server, which holds your files and hosts those files to the web browser and the data coming from the database, they're the two fundamental mechanics that you need. On top of that, on top of Apache and MySQL, um, there is a programming language and um, lots of programming languages um, don't really care uh, what web server you're using. Uh, this is the code, the code that makes everything work. Um, most web servers don't care what um, programming language you use. Um, so it doesn't have to be PHP that you use to write your website. But we are going to be talking about PHP because PHP is the language that WordPress has written in and a lot of other applications that are free. And it's probably the most easy to understand. In the Windows world, again, you could actually run PHP on a Windows uh, web server stack. Um, but uh, the Microsoft Microsoft happened to develop a language called .NET or ASP.NET. Um, they've got VB.NET, a whole lot of .NET is their kind of framework. And usually you see .NET running on IIS and MySQL. Now that's all very confusing and all the rest of it. Um, what we don't need to know about is, all we need to know is that the Windows stack is, is very similar. It's just different kind of brands, if you like. Um, we don't need to know that um, all the inner workings of all these bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new page here and I'm just going to take these guys because these are the fundamental bits we're going to talk about. Now, these elements here, our web host, which I've said rent there, we're actually, we don't need to install Linux on our computer to make we don't fundamentally need to install Linux on our computer to set up our web server, but we are going to use these elements to run um, WordPress or anything else. Now, because these are this web host server, it's not going to be rent, it's going to be our local host here. Because we want to set up one of these local web hosts on our computer, we obviously do need these elements I've just said, our uh, database, a web server, actually also what's, I guess, kind of not really explicit here, but missing is, you know, our web files, our application or, 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 web, or website files will sit on in our server. 
um, here effectively. Um, those web files, PHP is an example of a web file that we'll be using. Um, another example of a web file that every website uses is uh, um, not just an example, but the website is HTML. So HTML is a programming language as well. And when you make uh, PHP based websites, you use HTML and PHP work hand in hand. And there's also another language that you might have that sits on top of that, which is also JavaScript. So if you make a JavaScript, Java. So these, these three bits usually, uh, three elements, um, a base programming language, um, HTML and JavaScript, generally they're the kind of three different um, pieces of code that work together to make a website. Now, um, they, those all those elements, um, come together as part of your application or your web files. So WordPress contains JavaScript files, HTML files, and PHP files. So I'm just going to, let's just chuck these guys in a row up here. Just knowing that these are just, let's put that guy to the back. And let's say these are all our application our web files, and they sit on top of our web server and our database. These, in our case, could simply just be WordPress, the WordPress install. And they are going to be the WordPress install that we're going to set up. WordPress, the install package, or the exe, or the wizard, installs all these guys onto our into our um, onto our web server, just like you would if you um, installed it um, via the internet. So even though this looks like a whole lot of bits and pieces, it just are the things that make up a web application um, on um, open source stack, PHP stack, and web. Uh, WordPress just happens to be an example of one of these applications. So let's just ignore this bit up here for a second, but we'll come back to it. And let's talk about this guy. So we want a local server, local host, we want a local web server. In order to set up a local web server, we need to get Apache or a web server and we need to get in a database install. Now installing MySQL and Apache, because it's open source, um, free software. If we had to do this by scratch, by, uh, by scratch, we'd probably have to go to something like this. The command line and go, let's put something in here and go, um, we need to install, you have to download something and then go install um, Apache services. It's, this is not <laughs> what you'd write, but effectively we, what we need in order to do all this stuff, and we, if we had to do it by scratch, We'd download a whole lot of files and we would need to do a few bits and pieces. We would need to set up the web server so it ran when our computer started up. We would need to have the database running in the background all the time. And they're called services. If you ever go control alt delete on your computer, um, or if you go to the task manager, let's just come up here. So all these things go on your computer applications, all the rest of it. So the apps Chrome, for example. So in the and and if we compared it with this diagram here. WordPress would be the application. But if you ever click on these things, you don't even know what's going on. One of these things at the end is services. And all these things, all these things are actually running on your computer pretty much all the time. And some of those services, what they do, these services are just, um, yeah, they're services, I guess, in themselves. But they're little pieces of code that are running on your computer all the time. And and, and no one, I mean, you know, you'd have to be a, re the, 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 you know, a real expert in computers to know what all these things necessary uh, do. But when you run something like Chrome or anything else, these services are installed and as uh, um, and, and run as soon as the application runs or even when your computer turns on. So if we look at some of these, I'm just going to order some of these things here, all these bits and pieces here. I'm going to try and look for something that we can uh, identify, understand, explain. Xbox, no, we know about Xbox, but we're not going to talk about that guy. Wondering if there is anything that's more common. Um, 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 services, services, services. 
maybe not actually at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I know it sounds really weird, but I'm going to start Spotify. So it's on Spotify, that's an application. Spotify started. And when you run Spotify, for example, which is an application, at the same time, if I refresh these, okay, these are all the details of everything running. These are all the EXEs. You see that Spotify is running, and in this case, it's doing four things. And there's also this thing called, when you run Spotify, it's, it's for whatever reason, it's running four EXEs, four programs running in the background. And it's also running a web helper, whatever that does, probably checks that I've, I've paid, for my, paid for something. And also at the same time, there will be some services within here that relate to Spotify. I don't see any, anything obvious, um, but if you sorted the name and you played around in here, you'd probably see Spotify in these list of services or something. They're usually never named right. They're all very programmy. Um, but there will be a service in here. It's probably a checker. It's probably a service that runs when I load my computer up and I probably turn it off to save um, resources. Is uh, There's probably something in here, and, and when you start your computer, it checks if Spotify is up to date. So that whole is Spotify up to date service, now you sometimes get this JavaScript one, you get all these other bits and pieces that are running. This is usually a service. Um, there isn't actually a user interface. These are all just things that need to run on your computer in order for the applications to work properly deep down underneath the hood if you like and even though i've probably just totally scared you by saying these these things called services the reason why i want to tell you about those is that there isn't actually a user interface which means like this front-end application necessarily for apache or mysql by, by default so if you downloaded, if you went onto the internet and searched for Apache and downloaded the raw files of MySQL, they, and you installed them, if you followed the instruction and installed them, they would just be running in the background. There wouldn't be anything at the front ground. Now that isn't cool because that makes it really hard for us to change things and understand what's going on. And I guess with, and I've just, and just explained, you know, how services and all the rest of it kind of run on your computer I, I don't we don't want to know about that and and luckily luckily the people who 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 make these applications and um, support the open source community said well like you have an app for WordPress that installs all these things there are actually apps that you can install that will do this for you and that's what we're going to use so looking here this is the same as this diagram here you can go to the internet and you can download let's change this guy to our local host you can do on kind of local host running on windows is what we're we're installing what what there is available on the internet is instead of us having to install services and even understand what they are or you know not being able to view that something's running in the background or that our database is up and running what people have done um, it is, is they've created something called, uh, well, it's called the LAMP stack. And the LA, the LAMP stack is an acronym standing for the elements that make up the Apache web server. So, P, pretty sure P stands for PHP, pretty sure M stands for MySQL, pretty sure A stands for Apache, and L might stand for Linux. They are all the elements that we need to have running for a web server. So we could somehow download an EXE file, a wizard, that installed that for us, installed that for us, installed that for us, um, and provided hopefully an interface, a user interface for us to understand what these things are, then our life will be a lot easier. And we don't we don't need to understand how to install services on our computer or or be a programmer or be actually magical in any shape or form to make this stuff run. We don't need a degree in computer science to set up a web server on a computer. You needed to uh, 10 years ago. Um, you really needed to know how these things work. And I tell you what, even though I did install some of these things when I was at university, I still didn't really understand what I was doing. I was just following instructions. 
So the good thing about these LAPM stacks that already exist on the internet is, is there's actually, you can just download these stacks and they will install the web server on your computer. It's called, they're called web servers really, but, but when you install that web server, it also installs the ability for you to, the PHP language and MySQL database. It sets up all those services things running in the background, just like if you downloaded Spotify and it automatically does all that for you, these stacks do the same. So we are going to download one of these stacks, one of these applications, so we can get our web host running. And there's quite a few of them. And there's at least two that um, I've used. And they're basically just variants of the stack. So if that was the name of the stack, that was, say, um, the... So if you heard, heard the term rollerblades, or actually implied skates are actually what they're called um, when they were designed. So LAMP, uh, LAMP stack is the um, inline sta skates of the world, and then there's brands, there's different people who have implemented that. And there's one called WAMP, and there's one called XAMPP, which is, they're just examples or different options of that. Um, to, the one that I think is probably the easiest to use, but is also um, stores a bit more stuff, it's got a good interface, is this guy. So what we're going to do, we're just gonna get rid of this guy for a sec, oh, throw him down here. And we're going to install one of these guys, and I'm going to show you how to install WAMP on your computer, which is our web server. So it will install all these things here that we need to run our website on our computer locally. Okay, so how do we get started? We simply go to Chrome, we type it in. There we go. I've already done it earlier. I said WMP. And if I search for LMMP, just, just so you know what I'm talking about, about here, there's the lamps come up. Of course they do. <laughs> awesome. Server. Then that stand. There we go. Go here. It just talks about web stacks and what is a web server. And it's a web server that contains Apache, MySQL, and PHP open source that uses Linux as the operating system. So exactly what we've just said. Now, that is just the concept, or like I said, the uh, the kind of concept behind it, Linux, Apache, MySQL for this one. What we, the reason why I'm going here is that this is one of these brand names. You'll see already, if you type it in it, there's already comparisons between these two apps. This happens to be a very good open source version of that, of what we want. And if we click on there, I think it's French maybe, I'm not sure. If we click on it there, Go to the website. It's French. I think so, yes. It says here. The I think W stands yes stands for Windows in their case. They're just trying to be smart. They're just trying to say that um, um, this particular version of that stack um, can run on Windows, which is exactly what we want. So what they're saying is it is a Windows web development environment. Yep, or a web server, you know, local web server. It allows you to create web apps with Apache, that's just a version, PHP and MySQL. And alongside that, they provide something called P, uh, PHP My Admin. And, and what the reason why, another reason why you want to d download one of these stacks that's all sorted for you is that this provides an interface, a user interface, just like Spotify has one, for us to change some stuff and we we need we need this so someone's done all the hard work for us they've packaged up all those confusing concepts i've done and, and all those and all the install bits and pieces and services and stuff we need and they've chucked it into this box and that's what we want we want this box so it provides all these bits i've just explained to you what all those things are and probably hurt your brain a little bit but what i'm saying is that there is already a box you can buy well not buy just get for free and it will cover all that stuff so this is the guy we're going to get, which is that website there. So um, it's, it's, it, look, you can read all the stuff if you want. I'm not, I don't think you need to. I think I'm going to explain to some of these bits and pieces. Like he's got a cool picture. He's got these guys. You go to the download bit and you first find out what your oper operating system is running. Is your computer a 32-bit or 64-bit? You should know the answer to that question. If you don't know the answer to that question, you go to uh, 
uh, go to your PC um, and you right click and you go to properties and then it'll tell you. So it's this here. What's your operating system? Is it 64 bit? This this is the this is sorry. This is the bit you want to know. So if you've got Windows, which is 64 bit, you probably understand there's just there's only two types. There's 64 bit or there's 32. 32 is what older computers generally run it, and usually your computers run 64 bit. Um, if it's 64 bit, you download the 64 bit version. And if it's 32 bit, you download the 32 bit. When you click on, it's got some other bits and pieces down here, which is just saying that version numbers, this is consistently updated by a bunch of guys up to no good, started making trouble. Anyway, so you can click this guy, you get some warnings. Um, some of these are in a different language. Um, they're really just saying this is free. Um, they're not saying anything else um, that you need to worry about. And you can click here. And what this does is it will take you to um, a website called SourceForge. Um, SourceForge is this guy here, SourceForge.net. I don't want this guy to actually download. Um, it takes you here. This is where this website, SourceForge.net, is where a lot of open source software um, um, lives. Um, you can download heaps of stuff from here. And if you get into if you get into open source software, this is a, a website you'll visit quite often. So they hold all the files, all the source files that you need for this on here. So it's open open source and available to anyone. Also, when you do download it, if I hadn't stopped that download, it would download. It's, um, I've downloaded it already. It's quite big. I can't remember, about 300 and, 386 megabytes. So you want to do that um, when you're um, plugged in at Wi-Fi, not over your data. If you look down here, it recommends some other things. It's saying HTTP server, which is web server. That's all that HTTP stands for. Um, it's also saying if you, you can also download some others. See, here we go. There's another one called this. There's another one called this. These are all different types. They're all different brands. Okay, so thank you for downloading it. Now, I happen to have already downloaded it, but I haven't installed it. So it's here. So I'm going to just, I've got it here. Here we go. Now, if we click on that install, just like you would anything else, and run that guy, just like you would any other app, it's going to say, do you want to allow it to install, just like you install anything else off the internet. It loads up. It's this pink, variable, obvious, obvious color. What's our language? English in this case. Yes, I accept. You can have my firstborn child or whatever, as long as you give me this for free. It tells you some important information. This is all stuff that if you had any problems uh, carrying out this um, this um, installation, then just let me know. Um, these are all the kind of, if, you've, if your computer's not up to date, basically, you'll need to do some extra stuff, but 99% of the time you won't need to. It's saying we need at least two gigs, so this is quite big. It will install it not to program files. It will install it on C drive. I recommend you leave that default. Um, I, I recommend you do that. The reason why um, it's putting it directly in C drive and not program files is that a web server, like I said, a, kind, a web server kind of needs access to quite a lot of stuff going on in your computer. It needs to install those services. It needs to talk to the internet. It's quite raw. And if you're in program files, there are some limitations to what all the applications and program files can do. So when it says, I want to be just C drive natively, you say, yes, yes, you can, because that's probably the best option. Just go next. Um, what, do you want a shortcut? Yes, we do. Of course we do. It will say yes, and you'll go install. Now, right right now, it's just installing the application. Um, unlike um, Spotify, um, there's actually quite a lot of pieces of files that are installed um, when you set up a web server. It's effectively when, at the moment, the reason why it's taking a while is PHP, and in order to run PHP, you need all the base PHP um, code files. And, and you don't even necessarily, necessarily know what PHP is now, but it's just a programming language. And in order for that to run, there's quite a lot. I mean, I, I can't remember. There's you know hundreds of files that are needed in order for that to work. In order for that to work, there's another 
hundreds of files. In order for that to work, there's another hundreds of files. So it's installing quite a lot of those files, which is why it requires a bit of space. Well, there's a lot of files going on, but don't worry. If you wanted to get rid of it, it's quite easy to get rid of. There's an uninstall option as well, just like any other app. Um, after it installs all those files, it needs to start running those services I talked about. And um, you will get some prompts around, do you want to install MySQL or Apache? And would you like to install PHP? I think. We'll see. Um, so it's going around here. You can even see what it's doing, just like any other app. But it's take, it's really unpackaging. It's really un unzipping the um, exe file that you downloaded. And there's a lot of stuff in there um, in order to make a web server go. When you go to your um, web server in the internet, the this is our local one, but when you go to the one in the internet, they've already set all this up probably only once on the web server. So when you've got your internet host on the in, in the internet, that wasn't our cloud, it's our internet one. It's our internet. On the internet, those guys, when you buy web servers, they've set this up on massive servers, big, big, big servers, bigger than your PC, massive, with lots of space, basically. One of these guys on here. And they've done this once. And then they can then chop it all up and sell it back to you. So... Um, that it's no different when you're on the internet and using a web host um, for when you're setting up your local web host. All these files are the same files um, that they have running in the internet. The other thing we'll notice that when we finished getting this all installed, so it's installing MySQL now, is that we can, um, we need when I come back here, we need to check sometimes that this guy here is running correctly and it's, this guy here is running correctly. And you'll see in the interface when it installs that there will be the ability for us to, I'm just going to say this, that this guy here is green as in it's going, like yes, it is going, it's working. And this guy's green, it's lit up. They're both running those services, which were in our taskbar here, that the Apache service and the MySQL service are running. And you don't need to go here to check it, but one of the, it will be in here and it will say stop for running. But these things are running in order for your web service to go up. Now, you wouldn't need to worry about that when you installed Spotify because they don't really, it's not much, there's, it's pretty simple and it doesn't get right down into your operating system. These two do. And this application sh will tell us whether or not these things are running. If the database is not running and the web server is not running for whatever reason, which you don't, you know, probably even understand well, yes or no, why it's not working. If they're not running, then your website will not run. And this is a common problem. It's the reason why I use one of these guys because some of them are quite good at indicating is there a problem. You need this need you need to check is this running? Is this running? So firstly, is our is this is this which is our stack so i can get rid of that name now is this guy running yes he is and then when this guy starts up he will start this guy up and this guy up and if he's not working then these guys definitely won't be working and even if he's running some of the times these things are red as and they're not working and we need to check that if if for example we navigate to our website and it's not there so the other thing that's missing on so if we look at this and we know that this actually is our local host, so I'm just going to call this guy the local web server or local web host, web server, if this, which it is, this is what this stack is, this stack is, and I move his description just down there at the bottom there. So by installing this, we're installing our local web server and all the bits and pieces we need. Get rid of him. And once this guy's running, like I said before, we can throw our files. I might even get rid of this guy because he's just a type of file. I'll move him across. We can, all these guys here, I'm just going to bring him over here. These guys, our applications like WordPress, can therefore then be installed on our web server. So if I move you guys here and put you down here 
these guys, our web apps, which just happen to be these guys, which happen to be WordPress as an example, they sit on top of this guy right. So as soon as this guy is installed, we can start installing apps. And then, once our app, our WordPress is going, we go to our web browser like you would on the internet. So you go to your, let's call this our Chrome or, or Edge or whatever you use, but just say Chrome. We go to our web server and we enter our URL. In this case, it's probably going to be localhost. Go to the domain, which is the local, local domain. This guy here, we can view our application. So I might move that guy there, it makes a bit more sense. Go to here, see our web. Now, if we were using the, as we see in tutorial one, if we were going to the internet, this would all just be, we wouldn't see that, we wouldn't see this guy here. This guy here would be gone. He would just be a web server, so just, we would never see him. But in no way else is this or this any different if it was on the internet. The only difference would be the domain name we went to. And I'll explain why that's localhost and not a domain name. So what we're, we're, what we're doing is this stuff here. Okay, so let's go back to install. It's saying here, which is interesting, because Internet Explorer is supposed to not be on Windows anymore, but it actually is in the background. It's saying, would you like to use Internet Explorer will be used as a web post, or would you like to choose another browser and install on your computer? And to be honest, I'm going to say that I'm fine with that. Um, the reason I want to say I'm fine for that is I can't be bothered finding where the Chrome EXE is. So I'm just going to say, no, I'm happy with that. It's finished the installation. One of the it's in, it's in installing services and some, there was that, see, there was that pop-up just then? That then, when that pop-up did, what we would have to do if we didn't have one of these things is it wrote in the command line and said, start the Apache service. And as a result, we're being asked here, would, can, are we happy that Apache talks to the internet, and we're like, yes, yes, we are happy that Apache talks to the internet because it needs to. We say allow access to that. And now it's saying you're now ready to continue the setup. And this thing here, which I'm just going to throw over here, admin. Are you called again? My admin. It's app. This thing it's saying to install is a user interface, the UI or the user interface, the front end to talk to these guys. So it's saying, would you like, we're going to install this so you can talk to that and you can view that stuff without having to get into code. You can just use this thing. I'll show you what it is. It's just a web page that talks to um, MySQL. So we're like, yep. Okay, you're done. It's all installed. Happy, happy, happy. Finish. Okay. Talking about those services that we talked about before. What we're going to do is now it's installed, we're going to run it. So it will appear in your um, start bar. So we'll just type that in. And there it is. There's the web app. So I'm going to add this guy to my st start bar because I'm going, to, I'm going to be using him quite often. I'm also going to right click on them and say run as admin. And I, I, the reason why I'm right clicking and just running as admin, I'm just going to make sure it has the it has the rights to do whatever it wants to do. I don't want to, um, any problems to happen. So just we'll run that as administrator saying, would you like to use this app? It's not from the internet. And you're like, yes, it's fine. Okay. It does something, disappears, and you're like, oh, shit. And down here, with this thing that's red, now it's gone amber, and now it's gone green. And green means that these things are all working. If that was red, like that, if that icon was red, it meant that one of these guys was not working. It's a combination. But in this case, he's green, and that's a good sign. That means everything's running. Here he is here. All services are running. So that's why I use the word service. Local server, which is our web host, local, they've called it local server. 
it's saying it's running everything's running which is great it means and usually when you install this the first time everything's running and it's all great and if it doesn't then usually you've got something wrong with your computer sometimes this stuff's up and we have to uninstall and reinstall it so everything's running we've got our icon that's all that appears it doesn't appear anything else there isn't any other ui there is no spotify interface okay so just be aware of that if you left click on them you can right click on them and it gives you some options a whole lot of stuff lots of things lots of bits and pieces that we don't really need to know about but if we left click on him we get this little baby interface and this is important what we get is and i'm going to i'm just going to snap this guy this is always fun this the old snap option when you want to go real quick boom oh no he's too close i can't actually snap him can i snap him I found a good way of doing this the other day where you could run him and then go alt tab back no i can't do it that's right i can't snap him that's okay that's probably a good way of doing it so what i need to go in here there, there we go it's made in france it's all these things the bottom bit are those services that i talked about if one of the if this was not green down the bottom here all services running then that means that the Apache service, the MySQL service is not working properly. And you get the option of starting them all, stopping them all, restarting them if you've got any trouble with them. And hopefully you don't because then it's pain in the ass. These are the elements I talked about, MySQL, PHP, and Apache. Virtual host, it's just saying that you actually have a... Um, uh, uh, URL that's local to you. My, www um, directory is where, if you click on this guy, it'll open up a local file. That is where you put your website files. Go back to it. MySQL, we don't need to worry about any of these things unless we want to get too technical, and that's not going to be covered in here. It's just little tweaks or adjustments you want to make to MySQL. PHP, we don't want to make any adjustments here. Apache, we don't want to make any adjustments here to start off with. Okay, so they're just this is just simply if you click on one of these things, it's simply going to take you to a file where you can make some modifications if you needed to. If your PHP version was wrong, database wasn't working, if for whatever reason. I, I look, I've seldomly ever got into these things and I've and I've made websites for years. This guy, very important, so you always have a look him. That's where you stick your applications, your web files. So this is what what this is doing is it's actually here. It's the directory, where, the www directory in this case, where we stick our web files. So that there, that URL there, is where we stick our applications. That is now our internet. That is now our web host. Going back to it. Virtual hosts, he's really saying, they're really just saying that the only way to access this here is by uh, clicking on local host that's fine it's i've never really used that option either but the top one is how if we click on this guy it's a shortcut if we click on him he's going to load up with the web browser and he's automatically stuck local host in. and a local host is an old school word from microsoft days i think or even before that which meant I don't want you to go to the internet and look for my website. I want you to look locally. I want you, there is some, you're really telling the, the, the web browser that your website's local. And at the end of local host, this, all these files here, what you see, what you see here is the web view of these files here in your WW directory. So this particular page that's been loaded up is actually a page within here. So when you drop something in here, it'll appear in here. And this is just kind of like a landing page they made. And what this landing page is, so it's actually this index file that's been loaded up. So if you actually opened up and looked in there into the source code, well, confusing, but, but believe it or not, all this stuff here, that's this. And it's just saying what's running. The reason why you go to localhost, it's just also provides you with a quick view to get into your files. So the, you drop your apps in here, your apps are installed in here or whatever way, and they are viewed here. So 
what I might do, for example, is if I made just a, um, I'll use a text file, and I wrote ben.html, nothing in it. Oh, I need to be careful with that. Ben.html, need to save him as. I'm going to call him ben.php. There's nothing in that file. Delete this other guy. See, I've just written Ben with a capital B, and I've called it .php. If I go up here and I click in and write in Ben.php. That is this file here. To be even clearer with that, if I go into that file and edit it, and I go, "Hi, this is the file I just created." And save that guy. Refresh. I just want to show you that anything in here can be navigated to from here. We'll get into that. We'll get into that in terms of um, using the files locally. The final thing that's happening in our, or the reason why we we want this guy, is that there's this thing called my, um, yep, sorry, PHP my, uh, my admin. And this guy here is our, our web page that's, and, and a lot of code that's already written. It will load up the web browser again. And simply, it takes us to localhost my PHP my admin. And this is a web, an interface, a web interface to the database. It says MySQL. It's really weird. It says PHP my admin. But when, if we were to log in here, and I'll explain what the, you can probably say, what is username and password. It's just someone's written an application to allow us to talk to our database. And when you install an app locally, um, sometimes you're asked to set up a database first and you go to this application to set up a database. It sounds really weird, but the username is usually root and the password is usually nothing. That's the default. And we click go. It comes up with this interface and all this new stuff that we're not going to go into. But really, this is, this is the place where you can create a new database if you needed to with your app. Um, we are not going to do that in this tutorial, but what we are going to do is explain that this is kind of our interface to the database and that these files here, if we, where we drop our apps in, um, we can navigate to. And that's all because we have this thing sorted, all ready to go. So now we've got this sorted and everything's running, we're happy. And what you can do is you can exit, if you right click on it, you can exit and it will close all those services down. And just to show you what I was talking about before, in terms of those services, which was all a bit confusing, and I'll probably confuse you more, you'll notice that if you see these background processes here, they are these services. So Apache is the one I talked about, and there should be my SQL there. So they're in the stuff being installed inside here. Okay, so we now have our web server set up on our computer locally. We've set up our local web server. I keep it down in the taskbar. When I finish my web development, I do. I come here and I exit. That will close those down. And then when I want to get that up and running again, I click and I say yes to that again. And it will load back up and it will be red. And it's now none of the services running. It's trying to start them. So just give it a little bit of time. Don't rush. And now it's started. Um, Apache and MySQL, all these things have gone green and therefore it's green and we're ready to go. And so if I wanted to start my development from here, the only thing I'd really do is I'd go to I'd go to localhost if I had something already, and I'd go to my directory, have that running, and now we're ready to install any app we want locally on our local web server. It's all done. Thanks for that. And uh, next time we'll install WordPress from scratch locally on your computer. And just be aware that every time you create a folder here, so if I said website one, and I said website two, and I went to my web browser, and I said localhost, you could just navigate it to that. Yeah. Those projects appear on this front page and they could be your web projects. Each one of those directories that you create in there could be different websites. 
if you click up on there you'll see it's just let's put a little space thing in it and put it there the reason why nothing's happening there is there's no there's no code in those pages and we'll talk about so well, actually no i'll do it well i'll we'll do it over here actually just to finish off this tutorial i'll show you that if i drop that drag that file that was called ben there and i might just go change the name of that to website one copy him here paste it call that website two if that was just our website which is just one little file i might get rid of the space just because that might be a bit confusing for you guys um, spaces websites and spaces don't go well together so i don't recommend ever having spaces and names so we've got website one website two refresh the local host um, um, page you'll see our web project we click there and when we click on that it'll start chugging away and say there's nothing there which is fine but then if we typed in website.php which is the website one.php which is the name of the file i put in notice that it will serve the page that i had written earlier or the code that i oh actually it won't serve the page and this is quite good why won't it serve the page that i put in website one.php ah you can see why very sorry i know exactly what's going on here localhost which is the directory we're in yes that's it so see the file that i had. always have localhost at the front that's kind of like your www slash the name of the website or the project that you've got in the folder and then the file name if you when you create a website and you have a file called index we just call it index for example and you go back to this one and call this one index then the web server is smart enough just like on the internet that you don't even need to give this a name you can go like that and it will serve any file that's called index.php or um, html and so there we go so now our website's there it looks just like a normal website on the internet so web server's running and we can now get our files running and set up multiple web projects onto our uh, computer and next time i'll show you how to install a specific app which will be wordpress just like one of these guys with lots of files and how we can uh how we can set that up cool